Hello, everybody. My name is Eric D. Johnson. As you know, right here. I live right here in the city of Memphis, in the state of Tennessee, in the county of Seattle. Today's date is early Sunday morning, October 2nd, 2016, time 4.55 a.m. First, say thank you to all my fans, my support for your continued encouragement support. Continue to further follow me. Continue to keep myself employed right here. Right here in the Memphis Tri-State area. And continue to further my education at Monroe College Online. Pursuing my social peace study, and business administration, concentration, and marketing. And uh, today in video, we're going to continue to talk about African traditional religion. Or the music you're in the background. That's all uh, African hip-hop. You know, you go online, you can hear African classic radio, you can hear uh, uh, hip hop, uh, R&B, uh, soul, you can go online, and uh, go on from there. African traditional religion is being taught, is being taught. And institutions of higher learning in meaning institutions of higher learning meaning colleges, universities in sub-Saharan Africa. You can earn a bachelor's degree, master's degree, PhD in African traditional religion. Where is sub-Saharan Africa? Well, let's look at a map. This map is a language distribution map. It shows you the languages that are spoken on the African continent. And it shows you the people and where they're located, you know, where they live, where they're located. And it shows you South Saharan Africa. That blue color is the Afro Asiatic. The yellow color is the Nilo Saharan. The dark orange color is the Niger Congo A. The light orange color, that's not the Congo B. Now, as you can see, this is South Saharan Africa. It shows you South Saharan Africa. Now, over there, to your side over there, it shows you the color code. It tells you that the uh, blue color is the Afro Asiatic. It tells you that the yellow color. Represents the uh, Nilo Saharan. Now the dark orange color. It represents the Niger Congo A. The light orange color represents the Niger Congo B. The band two. Now the green color. That green color. Those are two groups of people. The Koi or Quay people. They are pastoralists. The sand people. Are the hunter gatherers. Now, over there on the island of Madagascar, that purple lavender color, that's the Austronesians. The Austronesians are the people that live in Indonesia. They left Indonesia, migrated, and settled on the island of Madagascar and colonized the island of Madagascar. They are not the original inhabitants of the island of Madagascar. Now, 
this is another map that shows you the Niger Congo. It shows you sub Saharan Africa. But this is a Niger Congo map. Language map. Now, the primary branch, the Volta Congo. The South Volta, Bantu. The Bantu, besides Bantu. The other East, Binu Congo. The West, Binu Congo. And your Quay. The North Volta. Crew. So new folk, your girl, both the languages, and your Adamant way, your Bungian language. Your other primary branches, Kordofan, Mandi, and Atlanta. And down at the, at the bottom, the little blue, it, uh, that, that represents the, do the Dogon, when I printed this uh, map out. A little of the bottom got cut off. Now, this is another language district, uh, language map. It's the Niger Congo map. It shows you sub Saharan Africa. Atlantic is Molo and Fule. Your Mandy, Bambare, Mandika, Dayule. Your crew, your girl, more languages. Your Quay, Bali, Akan, and Iwi. Your Dogon, your Ijoy. Your Adamawi, your Bunji, Chibaye, Banda, and Zandi. Your Kordofan, Kordofanwe. And you have your non band toy, your Ruba and Igbo. And you have your band toy, Thane, Tiki, Lingale, Mungo, and Kondu, Congo, Toki, Lube, Uganda, Rwanda, Rumi, Sukume, Kikuyu, then your band too, Swahili, Makue, and, and Yanje, Dembe. Shone, Tisange, Northern Soto, Zulu, Southern, Southern Soto, Kosa, Tiswane, and Dange, Umbundu. And as you know, of course, there are many other Niger Congo speaking people in Sub Saharan Africa. Start reading. We want to continue to place emphasis. We need to get in contact with the Niger Congo in Sub Saharan Africa to inform them about the problem that we have with the street gang and the drug gang in Chicago, Illinois, in Los Angeles, California, in the United States of America, in Canada, in Mexico, in Central America in South America, in the Caribbean, in Europe, and around the world. As you know, when we refer to online, like we did on my previous video, we can refer to uh, Wikipedia. As a matter of fact, let's take a few minutes. We're going to make a quick reference. We're going to go back. We're going to look up the word gang. We don't take long. See how, you see how fast that was? Didn't take long. It wasn't even 30 seconds.
we compete. Free inside compete. Online. A gang. Gang is a group of re recurrently associating individuals or close friends or family with, with identifiable leadership and internal organization, identifying with or claiming control over territory in a community and, and engaging either individually or collectively in violent or illegal behavior. Now, pay close attention. Some criminal gang members are jumped in or have to prove their loyalty by committing acts such as theft or violence. A member of a gang may be called a gangster or a thug. Now, let's look up this definition. Now, it says in the definition, in early usage, the word gang referred to a group of workmen. In the United Kingdom, the word is still often used in this sense, but it later underwent perjuration. Uh, in current usage, it typically denotes a criminal organization or else a criminal affiliation. The word gang often carries a negative connotation. However, within a gang which defines itself in opposition to mainstream norms, members may adopt the phrase as a statement of identity or defiance. The word gang, because this is the poor thing, this this the word gang derives from the past participle. Past participle. You, you, you understand your English grammar of old English. It's an old English gang meaning to go. It is cognate with old Norse gangster meaning journey. So uh, all you individuals walking around come out you in a gang, you you know you you know you're gonna get killed. You know I will kill you. You know I will kill you. I will. I, I kill you. Now, look up uh 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 let's see uh no the It ain't take long. It don't even take 30 seconds. Thug. A violent person, especially a criminal. We don't lie. We don't, we don't lie. Historical. Definitely. A member of a religious organization of robbers and assassins in India. Devotees of the goddess Kali. The thugs waylaid and strangled their victims. Usually travelers in a ritually prescribed manner. They were suppressed by the British in the 1830s. So, uh, for everybody in this, you going around calling yourself, referring to yourself as a thug. That's an Indian term. And, uh, you see what the definition, the historical definition, you know, I'm a kid, you know. You, you know you're going to be killed for, 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 for doing that. <clears throat> Let's look up mouth. We're going to look up mouth. Take long, it wasn't even 30 seconds. Just, just like that. Now, now, uh, okay, let me read this definition right quick. So we refer to with the people. Now, the definition a large crowd of people, especially one that's disorderly and intent on causing trouble or violence. Bird, crowd around someone in an unruly and excitable way. In order to admire or attack them. Now let's go to Wikipedia. Let's 
behavioral phenomena, crowd, flash mob, a group of people who assemble suddenly in a public place, cash mob, a group of people who assemble at a local business, <coughs> at a local business to make purchases, <coughs> a fill fight flash mob, mobbing, human bullying behavior, mobbing, animal behavior, Holocroxy, the rule of government by mob or a mass of people. Smart mob, a temporary self structuring social organization coordinated through telecommunication. Now, criminal and law enforcement. Irish mob, American mafia or Italian mob, Sicilian mafia, organized crime, a criminal gang, a mafia, flash mob robbery, member of Bloods, a member of the Blood Street Gang, mobbing, Scots law. A group of vigilantes, lynch mob, other criminal organizations sometimes referred to as a mob, include but are not limited, Jewish mob, Polish mob, Japanese mob, Russian mob, Greek mob, black mafia or Muslim mob, state line mob, Armenian mob. So we see that this word mob, now, it, you know, uh, refers to a crowd of people, but we know that there's a uh, crime and law enforcement. Oh, there's a uh, goon. Now, we all know the dictionary.com. It's a noun. Goon. G O O N. Goon. Inform a hard hoodlum or thug. Slight and stupid, foolish, or awkward person. A roughneck. Now, origin of goon. And she, uh, it's okay. It's still going to deliver the food for a thug her out to commit acts of violence or intimidation, especially in industrial dispute. They are uh, strong on, on cheap wine packs and cash for boxes. And it says here the word origin and history for goon. It says uh, 1921, a uh, stupid person from Goon, Simpleton, 1580s of unknown origin, but applied by sailors to the albatross and sim a similar big clumsy birds. 1839, says a hired thug, first recorded in 1938 in reference to Union Beef, beef Squad, used to cow strikers in the Pacific Northwest. 
probably probably from Alice the Goon, slow witted and muscular, but gentle nature, character in film of theater, theater, comic strip. Starting Popeye by E.C. Seeger, 1894, 1936, also was the inspiration for British comedian Spike Milligan's The Goon Show. What are now juvenile delinquents were in the 1940s, sometimes called Goonies. That's basically some of these words that people be using. That people either get hurt or killed for. The sorority and the fraternity is in the same category. It's a gang, a mob, uh, a goon. They're in the same category. Okay, let's go over here to... Um, Let's go right to the uh, definition of goon by, uh, by the Miriam Webster. Some of the definition of goon, a person who is hired to threaten, beat up, or kill someone, a stupid person. Who would definition of goon, a stupid person, a man hired to terrorize or eliminate opponents. And etymology of goon are probably short for English dialect, goon and simpleton. So that, that's all. Uh, now let's get, get to our reading. So, get in contact with the Niger Congo in South Saharan Africa and inform them that we have a serious gang problem in Chicago, Illinois. A street gang problem, a drug gang problem in Chicago, Illinois, in, in Los Angeles, California, and here in the United States of America. People walk around talking about they, from, they, they, they leave Chicago. And go all over the United States of America, and, and, and people send them walking around, telling them they doing what they tell them to do. But the people from Chicago tell them what to do. We have a serious gang problem here in the United States of America, a street gang problem, a drug gang problem here in the United States of America, in Canada, in Mexico, in Central America, South America, the Caribbean. Europe, because people in, in from Europe, from the United States, they they'll, they'll go over to Europe, and as you can see, the people in Europe they speak English. It's gangs in England and probably other probably other, other places in Europe and around the world. Get in contact with Niger Congo in South Saharan Africa. Immediately, as soon as possible. We're going to start today's reading from the book titled West African Traditional Religion. Written by Dr. Joseph Omar Sede Ava Lady with Dr. P. Adenumo Lopemo.
We read from chapter 7. God and society. Seven one. What is society? The word society is capable of various interpretations. It can be a number of persons constituting a single group or com or community. It can be the worldwide community made up of all human beings. It can be the totality of all of the individual friends or associates. It can be a group of persons organized on the basis of common work or interest, and it can be a group of people living the same way and having the same ideology. That binds them together. The central implication of those of these several meanings of society is that there can be no society without man. In other words, the society is made up of individual persons, and without these individual persons, there will be no society in existence. The fact is that man wants company and companionship. He is not solitary, and life is meaningless to him if he lives in solitude. Hence. He needs fellowship with other men. He wants wholeness, solidarity, and tenacity of purpose. He also wants deliverance from the dangers and troubles of the world. And he may not be able to achieve this end without the cooperation of his fellow men. We can further note that man is essentially an integrated whole or an individual personality. As we noted in the previous chapter, Man's spiritual and physical elements are one and cannot be separated. The physical body is considered to be the temple of the spiritual entity or the personality soul. And since the individual man who makes the society is regarded as an inter integrated whole, the society itself should also be a corporate integrated society. In a sense, both man and society are involved in each other and the conduct of the individual member of the society affects the entire society either for good or for evil, favorably or unfavorably. The story of a can in the Bible is a good is a good illustration of the sense of solidarity of the society or community. The whole community suffered a consequence of a can's sin until a can and his family have been wiped out. Thus, for the way of being a man in a society, man must regulate his conduct, and what he does to uphold the way of being of the society will be discussed shortly. I'm going to start right there. I've been reading from um, chapter 7, God and the Society. And we started at 7 1, What is Society? And we've been reading from the book titled West African Traditional Religion, written by Dr. Joseph Omase Abelado and Dr. P. Alanumo the Payton. We're going to continue our reading from the book titled African Traditional Religion, a definition written by Dr. E. Beloja I. Dohu. And we're going to be reading from chapter 5, 
a structure of African traditional religion. And we're going to be reading from number three, belief in spirits. spirits. This element in the structure of African traditional religion has already been mentioned in our examination of the term animism. We observe there that animism was applicable to African traditional religion only because it formed an element in its structure. That is, provided we restricted the term to its basic definition as a belief in recognition and acceptance of the fact of the existence of spirits who may use material objects as temporary residences and manifest their presence and actions through natural objects and phenomena. The previous section in this chapter, as well as the section that will follow, inevitably render this section rather brief. We refer to spirits here as those apparitional entities which form separate categories of beings from those described as divinities. We distinguish them also from the ancestors, since we are dealing with those under a separate subheading. Divinities and ancestors come under the general nomenclature of spirits, no doubt, but divinities and ancestors form a separate homogeneous categories of their own. Divinities and ancestors could be described as domesticated spirits. The ancestors have always been a part of the human family. And the divinities are intimately a tutelary part of the personal or community establishment. But under our particular reference, spirits are not as clearly defined. They may be anthropomorphically conceived, but they are more often than not thought of as powers which are almost abstract or shades. Of vapors which take on human shape. They are intermaterial and incorporeal beings. They are so constituted that they can assume various dimensions. Whatever they wish to be seen, they may be either abnormally small or abnormally tall, fat or thin. It is believed that especially when they appear beside the natural object which is their residence, they may appear in the form or shape or dimensions of the object. For example, a man describing his experience of the spirit residing in a tall, sacred tree said that he saw the shade as tall as the tree, but rather slender. When the spirit knew that it had been seen, it collapsed with a terrifying groan and dissolved into a mist. Spirits, according to African belief, are ubiquitous. There is no area of the earth no object or creature which has not a spirit of its own or which cannot be inhabited by a spirit. Thus, there are spirits of trees, that is, spirits which inhabit trees. There are special trees which are considered sacred by Africans, and these are believed to be special residences of spirits. The Yaruba, a hoko, a koko, also called by the Igbo. Ogolisi or Ogolisi, Ubodia, Navigus, according to R.C. Abraham is a sacred tree which is an emblem to several divinities. It is also reputed to be a residence to certain nondescript spirits which congregate and chatter like birds among its leaves in the middle of the night. Such a tree as spirits inhabit becomes their emblem. At the, at the foot of it, offers are made to them, and people make ejaculatory prayers as they pass by. In the same way, there, there are spirits which inhabit rocks, mountains, and hills, forests, and bushes, rivers, and water courses, which natural objects are accepted as their emblems. 
and the mediums by which they are approached, although the spirits which are considered spirits we, we are considered are generally described as nameless, except that there is a common generic name by which they are called collectively, collectively in each locality. Nevertheless, they are categories by which they can be described. For example, there are ghost spirits. It is believed by Africans that a person whose dead body is not buried, that is, with due and correct rights, will not be admitted to the abode of the blessed departed one, and therefore will become a wanderer, living an aimless, haunting existence. This is also the fate of those who die bad deaths by hanging or drowning from bad diseases or during pregnancy. Since they are accursed, they will not be acceptable in the abode of the blessed. This category of wandering spirits include all those who have been wicked while on earth and are therefore excluded from the fellowship of the good. The haunts of the ghost spirits are trees, rocks, rivers, and watercourses or hills. In certain areas, the possibility is not ruled out that they may enter into animals or birds or snakes in order to destroy things or molest people. Start right there. And we've been reading from chapter five, the structure of African traditional religion. We've been reading from number three, Belief in Spirits. And we've been reading from a book titled African Traditional Religion, a definition written by Dr. E. Benoja Adolu. I'll read from the book titled African Religions and Philosophy, written by Dr. John S. M. Beatty. And we'll read from chapter uh, chapter number five. <coughs> Shoot. Number five, the works of God. And we'll read from B, providence and sustenance. The 
open bundle name for God means he who supplies the needs of his creatures. This is one of the most fundamental beliefs about God, and examples of it come from all over Africa. In various ways, God provides for the things he has made so that their existence can be maintained and continued. He provides light, fertility, rain, health, and other necessities needed for sustaining creation. His providence functions entirely independently of man. <coughs> Excuse me. Don't, uh, Though man may endure the time, solicit God's help. Sunshine is one of the expressions of God's providence. It's held by some people like the Akan and Cory and B. Right, Capelli and Ali. The sun appears every day, provides light, warmth, change the season, and the growth of crops. This is very vital. So the Akan called God the shining one to signify that he is involved in the light of the celestial bodies whose shining symbolizes his presence in the universe. One of the, one of the Ancori, named for God, means sun. And the people believe that God makes the sun to shine by day and the moon by night. <coughs> for the Igbire, the sun symbolizes God's benevolence and expression of his providence. The rain is, however, the most widely acknowledged token of God's providence. To African peoples, rain is always a blessing, and their supply is one of the most important activities of God. Examples of this are found everywhere. For that reason, God is known as the rain giver or water giver among peoples like the Akan, Ale, Nguni, Mende, Tiswane, Akambe, Tia, and many others. Some of these even say that rain is God's spirit. This in African society being the vehicle of blessing. So that form of pronouncing of a blessing is often accompanied by gentle, gentle spitting. The spittle symbolizes prosperity, health, happiness, and good welfare. It is also why I believe that God shows his providence through fertility and health of humans, cattle, and fields, as well as through the plentifulness of children, cattle, food, and and other goods. Many societies therefore pray for these items. Thus, the new bay perform a ceremony in which they pray for the increase of cattle, saying, God, we are hungry. Give us cattle. Give us sheep. When making that sacrifice, the officiating elder prayed, God, increase cattle, increase sheep, increase man. The Zulu teach their children that the source of being is above and that it is God who gives men life and prosperity. When a bamboo woman realizes that she is expecting a child, she prepares food and takes a portion of it to the forest, but she offers it to God, saying, God, from whom I have received this child, take thou and eat. Other societies, like the Ancori, Azundi, and Banyawanda, incorporate God's name into their children's name, thereby recognizing that children come from him. In various ways, different peoples acknowledge the sustaining work of God. Some, like the Ambaluya, Akan, and Zulu, say that God sustains human life so that without him, mankind would vanish. Others see God's sustenance as functioning on a cosmic scale, upholding the whole universe. Thus, the bamboo say that if God should die, the world would also collapse. A number of peoples like the Burundi, Ashanti, Tongue, Nendai, and others consider God to be their keeper, guardian, protector, and preserver. For example, the Burundi call him the protector of the poor, the keeper of the poor, and savior. And the and, and young Jay look upon him as the great caretaker of life. Many pray that God 
would guard them, especially in special circumstances like pregnancy and sickness. The Lord are very conscious of God's continual care over them and speak of him as God who walks with you for that God is present among the Shalom. God is invoked to protect to protect us we are in your hand and protect us save me the omnipresent of God is experienced as protector is protector sustain upholding saving and healing one of the Begunde names for God Begunda means pastor which obviously carries with it the idea of God's shepherd shepherding his people the Kage described God as Bahiko, a name which means he who carry everyone on his back. This comes from the widespread African custom of women or girls carrying babies on their back. The name vividly describes God as nursing and cherishing people with the tenderness and care of mothers. Many societies believe that God heals the sick. For this reason, prayers, sacrifices, and offerings are made to God on behalf of the sick, the barren, and those in distress. Examples of this practice are reported from among the Ale, Chaga, and them, Shaluk, and others. When healing comes, it is often attributed to God. Even if medical agents may play a part in the healing process, God is thanked. For his help is otherwise acknowledged. For example, after recovering from a serious illness, I can be say, hey, if it were not for God's help, I, he, would be dead by now. The same ideas are expressed concerning God's saving work. People take it to be the result of God's help when they are rescued from danger or illness. The Ale, for example, Describe him as the deliverer of those in trouble in the Abeluye name. Willie, for God carries among other things the idea of one who saves, who saves helps, or steers, guides. The Barunda have a name. Kiza, for God who means there is a Savior. Thus God is involved in the affairs of mankind and people. Experience this involvement in terms of his continuing to create, sustain, provide, pastor, nurse, heal, and save. Most of this function on the physical and concrete level of being and with special reference to the life of man. We'll start right there. Read from the uh, chapter 5 the verse of God. And we just read B, Providence and Sustenance. And we're going to read from the book titled African Religious and Philosophy, written by Dr. John S. M. B. Concepts of God in Africa, written by Dr. Jonah S. M. B.
from a powerful God of man. <laughs> and we read from uh, number 16, worship, sacrifice, and offerings. Occasion when they sacrifice to God, cattle are the usual animals for sacrifice, and on important occasions, the people make long invocation when a person is on a journey. He knocks grasses together at the side of the path and prays to God. The Sandawi priests sacrifice black oxen, sheep, and goats when soliciting for rain. The Seba make offerings to God, especially in time of illness. An old person of the same sex as the sick one go to the to the shrine, taking with him her a pot of beer or milk. On arrival, he stirs the pot, saying, "This is for you." Sprout so and so, let him go well. In addition, a a goat or chicken is sacrificed, and thus attending the ceremony, eat it. Cows may be offered, but not killed. When the whole clan is gathered, the cow is sacrificed and eaten but replaced by another animal. When a child begins to teeth, the people sacrifice a goat as teething is considered a bad omen. The Shaluk makes sacrifice to God, either directly or through their national hero. In Yachim, who is expected to intercede with God to send them rain, a cow or another domestic animal is used for the occasion. The Shone used to kill a child ritually when they were in desperate need of rain. Formerly, they performed a major ceremony every two or three years at the Zimbabwe ruins. At this sacred ceremony, a great, cr a, a great crowd came together, and the priests, assisted by two virgins, sacrificed cattle and made offers of other possessions like ornaments and tobacco. Six black cows and a black ox were killed by suffocation and left in the wilderness to be eaten by wild animals. One black cow was burnt alive, and a black ox was killed and eaten by the people. The priest also offered beer, which is sprinkled over the sacred cave where the ceremony took place. Much of this has either died out or decreased since the arrival of Europeans in the latter part of the 19th century, but in some parts, black cattle are still sacrificed as sacred food especially in connection with rain making and prayers for rain. The Sonjo make sacrifices to God through their priests. They believe that their religious and national founder. Kambegu takes note of the sacrifices and prayers at the harvest festival offerings are made in the temple. When a cure or prevention of disease is sought, the people make sacrifices. The Swazi are said to make no di direct sacrifice to God. They are divinities or spirits to whom they offer beer or sour milk, praying that these will send away sickness. The Theta make sacrifices and offers to God, thanking Him when their famine is over and when barrenness has been cured. The Timni sacrifice to God. The Tychar may sacrifice to God at their annual agricultural and fertility ceremony. Individuals also make offerings or sacrifices on behalf of their villages or relatives. <coughs> the Arhobo do not sacrifice to God, but to his messenger. This is done, done at the family altar, which is found in, a, in every homestead. The head of the family prays every morning for the health, wealth, and peace of the people. The Wailemo sacrifice goats and chickens along the Omo River to the divinity or spirit of that river. In so doing, they hope that the spirit will not punish them with sickness. In time of drought, they take offerings to their sacred mountain where the controller of rain is believed to live. 
and being set with their offerings, it is a sign that the rains are near. The one Java sacrifice red cottage in time of public meeting. The entire community comes together, dances and calls upon God. The sacrifice being made by their priests, the people also observe two festivals in planting and harvesting time, which they celebrate with drinking and sacrificing and eating dogs. The way Tambutu sacrifice a white cow when there is a hurricane or rough currents ri- arise. They interpret these natural phenomena as indicating the anger of God. The sacrifice will thus act as a means of pacification. The Yahweh make various types of sacrifices and offerings, but those are considered to be the essence of Yahweh religion. All kinds of living things are almost all types of food and drink are used as sacrificing offers. Different divinity are the recipients when they practice the works will eat what can be eaten. It is thought that sacrificing human beings, which was done formally in order to invoke special blessings, may still be going on. Some of the divinities like Ogo were given human sacrifices annually. Yahweh's sacrifices served several purposes. According to the study made by Adamu, there are meal and drink offerings made daily at the shrine. Gift or thank offerings are made to divinities in appropriation or in appreciation for success, health, children, etc. Votive offerings are made when a person receives a favor for which he vowed to make offerings. Propitiation offerings and sacrifices are made during drought, famine, or serious illness. Substitutionary sacrifices and offerings are made when it is required to alter and in agreement. Some are made to ward off attack, evil, or misfortune, and others to appease the spirit of the earth. Blacksmith sacrifice dogs every fourth night to Ogun, the divinity of iron and war. At Ondu, there is an annual custom communal festival during the reason season when sacrifices are made to the same divinity. The people dance around the town and eat dogs for three days. The Zala sacrifice chickens and sheep to the spirit of the Omo River. I'm going to stop right there. And we're going to read from number 16, worship, sacrifice, and offerings. Sacrifice and offerings. And we're going to read from part four, God and man. And we're going to read from a book titled Conscience of God in Africa, written by Dr. John S. M. B. Continue to uh, refer everybody to our ninth continued study of our ninth to come on ninthly. You know we can refer to uh, 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 our ninth dot org. You can refer to uh, learn one on one dot org. You can refer to YouTube videos. Uh, for example, when we when we continue to study our uh, coastal. We can refer to YouTube videos and help us with our study of uh, COSA. We can refer, uh, and also in the being Zulu, we, we, we continue to uh, refer to the YouTube video. 
is to continue to study our inner being Zulu and, uh, uh, and many other Nigel Congo names that we, we, we continue to uh, refer to YouTube videos that, that's been very helpful in our study of Nigel Congo languages. And we also refer to uh, the Peace Corps, which is a government, United States government uh, agency which promotes uh, peace around the world. But the Peace Corps do, the, uh, they have uh, courses, lessons, they have audio, video that you, that you can refer to to help study uh, Niger Congo languages. Uh, you can refer to uh, the Foreign Service Institute. Those, those, those are, uh, are like diplomats, ambassadors. Not just in the United States, but this, this is uh, around the world. They promote diplomacy around the world. Uh, countries have to uh, negotiate with each other. So you have to have your diplomats and your ambassadors to uh, to consult with each other and, and to dialogue about various uh, issues that governments uh, dialogue about. But in, a, in the process of dialogue, the U.S. government, foreign service institute, in uh, interacting, interrelating with uh, the Niger Congo on the continent of Africa and the Nile Saharan and Afro Asiatic and uh, the other people that live on or around the continent of Africa. Uh, certain institutes uh, have languages that they teach to the uh, diplomats and ambassadors the Niger Congo language. So we can refer to the Foreign Service Institute. Uh, to help in our study of Niger Congo language. Uh, and we, we can go down the list of uh, African nation of Mali, we study the Bambari, uh, Burkina Faso, we study the Moro language, the Senegal, we study the Moro, uh, the Gambia, we study Mandingo. Now, some African nations, the official language is the native language, but also a European language, such as the African nation of Guinea Bissau, Angola, Mozambique. The official language is Portuguese. Uh, the African nation of uh, the many other official languages, English, such as Liberia. Uh, I think Gambia, I think Gambia also official language is uh, English, but they, they still, you know, recognize the native language. Nigeria, official language is English. The African nation Cameroon, official language English and French. Uh, and I think Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe, and many other, possibly a few others, official language English. Official language French, Senegal. Uh, Mali, official language French. Uh, Central African Republic, official language French. And Sango, Rwanda, and Burundi, official language French. Uh, Cape Verde, official language Spanish. Uh, you know, Allen, Cape Verde, official language Spanish. So these are these are many countries that have the official language is, is a European language, including with you know in addition to it the native language. And uh, <coughs> sorry, the African nation of Guinea, official language you no know, uh, Fulani, Sierra Leone, the Timni language we study. Liberia, one of the languages, Capelli, uh, the Ivory Coast, uh, the Akane, Tweet, the uh, African nation of Ghana, 
Ashanti tweet. Happy Nation told them, even. Happy Nation of Benin, the phone language. Nigeria, we know that. <coughs> Excuse me. The African nation of Nigeria is the most populous nation on the continent of Africa. Nearly 200 million people, close to, it's getting close to 200 million. They ain't got there yet. They're getting close. But the African nation of Nigeria, uh, uh, Nauru, Igbo, Tia, Edo, Nu, and also Hase, uh, which is uh, Afro Asiatic, uh, Kanuri, which is Nilo Saharan, and many other Niger Congo, uh, Fulani. I enjoyed the uh, and, and some more of uh, a name, the EP name. Uh, <coughs> so, Nigeria, you know, many speakers of Niger Congo, um, Equatorial Guinea, French, and Spain. The African nation Gabon, French, and uh, Spain. The Republic of Congo. The two, the two Congo. The Republic of Congo. The two Bay. The Democratic Republic of Congo. Bengali. Angola. Mozambique. Portuguese. Rwanda. Banya Rwanda. Who are the Banya Rwanda? The Hutu. Tusi and the uh, Twe and uh, the Rundi, same thing, the Banyan one, the people, the Hutu, the Tusi, and the Twe in Burundi, they speak Kibundi. <coughs> and uh, the people that live in Uganda. Buganda, they speak Luganda and Swahili. Kenya and Tanzania, they and Kenya, the majority, one of the majority groups, the Kikuyu, but the, and one of the, the official language is Swahili. In Tanzania, one of the larger majority group, the Sukume, now the official language of Tanzania is Swahili. Malawi. The Chiba language, Zambia, Bembe, Zimbabwe, Shone, Botswana, Setswane, Swaziland, Swazi, Lesotho, so, uh, Sesotho, now South Africa. We know that the Nguni people, and uh, one of the languages uh, in the being Zulu, Zulu, Tonsa, uh, Bindi, uh, Tsisange, and uh, 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 Namibia. Ocean Dange, Ocean Kwanyame, and uh, so we're gonna continue to work on our Niger Congo languages because we are uh, all of us who are descendants of the Niger Congo. We are on the continent and where outside the continent, we know that. The East African slave trade or the African or, or, or the Arab slave trade. Contributed to the people living outside of Africa. 
nice and cold on the inside. And also the transatlantic slave trade or the West African slave trade is another contributor to the uh, human being who are descended of Nigel Clover living outside the continent of Africa, mainland Africa. And uh, we continue to uh, show our, our, our respect for our culture and our custom. And uh, we're going we to we uh, continue to do that. And we're going to get ready to end today's video. And uh, again, my name is Derek D. Johnson, also known as Bright Shine. I live right here in the city of Memphis. It's in the state of Tennessee, in the county of Sheriff. And I thank all my fans, my support for your continued encouragement and support. I continue to work on my entertainment and my music interest. And to my next video, you take care of yourself. I wish each and every one of you the very best.